Uh, quiz. Here we go. Mark your own. And Cirque. It says the book is sitting on a level desk. Which of the following statements are true? There are no forces acting on the book because it's not accelerating. True or false? What forces are acting on it? Give me the obvious one. And? Now, if I had said the net force is zero because it's not accelerating, that would be true. The net force is the combined combination of all of the forces. False. The magnitude of the normal force between the book and the desk equals the magnitude of the gravitational force on the book. I think we can assume it's true. The net force on the book is equal to zero. I think that's true. Friction force is what's holding the book on the desk. False. Could it sit on the desk if the desk was made out of ice? As long as the desk was level, just fine. False. Half mark for each of those to get your two marks. Example two says, find the acceleration of the entire system. OK. What are the forces acting? I have M1G, normal force 1, tension, M2G, normal force 2, tension, applied force. And it says mu equals 0, at least in this case, so no friction. Who's winning uh, 24? Minus tension plus tension equals M1 plus M2 times A. Uh, ooh, tensions cancel. Uh, relaxing. Uh, how do I get the A by itself? Divide by M1 plus M2. Okay. A is going to be 24 divided by m1 plus m2, which is going to be 24 divided by 20, which is going to be uh, divided by 4, 6, 1.2 meters per second squared. If you got the right answer, two marks. Otherwise, I would probably give one mark if I saw that, a half mark for that, and then a half mark for the answer. Find the tension between the two masses. Doesn't matter which mass I use. I'm going to look at one mass, though. Matt, I could go winner minus loser equals 12A. Or I could go winner. Oh, is there a loser on this mass? I'm going to use this one. Winner equals M1A. Right? Or you could go winner minus loser equals M2A. But regardless, here the tension's already by itself. Mass 1 is 8. Acceleration is 1.2. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 0.2 is 1.9.6. newton. And you'll get the same answer over here with a bit more work. Would I do both on a test to check my answers? Probably later on. I'd go through the whole test first, though, and then I'd say, hey, can I find some of these forces in different ways? Check my answers. All right. It says, find the acceleration of the entire system in question two if now there is a coefficient of friction and the pulling force is increased from 24 to 50 newtons. So I'll add this for the next one. I would have friction force one and friction force two. So now my equation is going to look like this. Winner minus tension minus friction force 2 plus tension minus friction force 1. That equals M1 plus M2 times A. Ah, tension still cancel. 50 minus... Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. Force what? MG. By the way, today is the day that that changes. Today is the day I'm going to say to you, oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force, and the answer will not be mg. 
which is why I've never ever taught you friction equals mu mg. In fact, I've gone ballistic anytime anybody has ever said that. It's that way as long as you're on level ground. Today is the day we go on slants. Today is really where physics 12 starts in forces. Uh, this is going to be mu m2g minus mu m1g. And if I divide by m1 plus m2, that will give me a. A is going to be 50 minus 0.12 times 12 times 9.8 minus 0.12 times 8 times 9.8 all divided by 20. What do you get for your acceleration? 1.32? Anyone else? In terms of part marks, I would probably go uh, one mark if I saw that, one mark if I saw that, half mark for the numbers, and a half mark for the answer. And you'll notice you can get two out of three and get the answer completely wrong. I, I really want to reward you for knowing how to do it. Find the tension between the two masses. Okay. Um, I'll use this one because tension is a winner. My equation is going to be ten, uh, tension minus friction 1 equals M1A. You could also use, uh, clear Mr. Duick. You could also use 50 minus friction 2 minus tension equals M2A, which will get you there just fine with a bit more work. Here, Tension is going to be M1A plus friction 1, which is going to be M1A plus mu M1G. What did you get for the tension? 20 newtons? Uh, 20, and I won't be fussy on the quiz, but if you wrote that on a test, I would have to take a half mark off. Why? How many sig figs is that? Yes, I'd look for either this stupid thing or 20.0. Or 2.0 times 10 to the 1, write it in scientific notation, then you'll always be fine. Elevator questions. Okay. What does a scale read? I actually told you in the question. I won't on a test. I'll expect you to know that a scale does not measure mass. What did we say a scale measures? Normal force. Person and the scale are inside a elevator. Find the scale reading in each case. Here's my free body diagram mg normal force. Brianna, why did I draw the normal force larger than mg in A? Because the acceler elevator is accelerating which way? So who's winning? My equation is going to be winner minus loser equals ma. The normal force, which is the scale reading in newtons, is going to be ma plus mg, which is going to be 60 times 1.2 plus 60 times 9.8. What'd you get for 4A? 660? What if the elevator accelerates downwards? Well, my free body diagram would have mg normal force would be lower because mg is winning. My equation is going to be mg minus normal force equals ma. The normal force is going to be plus that to this side, our vendor, minus that to this side, mg minus ma, minus ma. Uh, 60 times 9.8 minus 60 times 2.25. What'd you get for the normal force here, Sean? 723? I think it's got to be less. He's going down. He's got to weigh less than going up. By the way, you probably put a plus sign there. Just be thinking. Pardon me? Why? We said we take care of the negatives in our winner minus loser. We'll never worry about direction. We take care of it here 
and here. So I'm going to give you 1.5, by the way. Sorry, what's the correct answer? 453 Newtons. <coughs> C. Elevator moves up at a constant velocity. That really means winner minus loser equals. Why can I put a zero there if we're at a constant velocity? My acceleration is zero, so when I go ma, it's going to be m times it's going to be zero. In fact, what it really means is that the normal force equals mg. And this is what Einstein said. Einstein said you can't tell if your eyes are closed whether you're moving at a constant speed or standing still. Everything is relative. In fact, for all we know, all of us, well, we are all moving right now. Is the Earth standing still? No. Can we tell? No. We don't know, is it? Even though we know intellectually it's spinning around, well, it's spinning around its axis and it's spinning around the sun. Everything around us is moving at the same rate as us, so we can't tell that we're moving. Uh, what'd you get? Mg is what? is what? 588? What's the answer for D? Prove it. I would have said this. I would have said, okay, gravity. I'm not sure that the normal force is zero. I'll put a small one there. I know it's losing. And when I go winner minus loser equals MA, when I get the normal force by itself, I would go 60 times 9.8 minus 60 times 9. Point, was the mass 60 or 65? I can't even remember. 60. Oh, that's definitely zero. So there's the proof. I, by the way, zero, if you don't go to two sig figs, I'm not fussy, but I will be fussy if you didn't put zero newtons, I would take a half mark off. If you said 0, 0.0, yeah, okay, good, you know, two sig fig. Um, this is what we call apparent weightlessness. True weightlessness is if you're floating in space away from any planets and there's no gravity. You're truly weightless. Apparent weightlessness is you have no normal force. Give yourself a score, please, out of 19. Hey, can you get out the homework from last day? We looked at the Atwood machine. Probably did. The Atwood machine. Now, I said try this one for homework. And then I told you that I was going to do it last night. I totally forgot. Um, who thinks they have an answer? And if we all have the same answer, then we're probably right. I don't know. Zay, what'd you get? Oh, okay. John, what'd you get? 10.2? Anyone else? 8.2, 9.6, okay, 8.54, 3, okay. So here's what I'm going to do right now. Right click, new sticky, complete physics scholarship question, and email out the solution. Sleep for, oh, let's sleep for about six hours. I'll do it tonight and I'll send out the solution. I don't have time to do it and get through today's lesson, unfortunately. I wish I did. Or I'll do it at lunch today if I think of it. From the rest of the homework, were there any questions that you were going, holy schmoly, I can't get these answers? Number two? Here? Okay. <gasps> Why is number two strange? Okay, so there's several ways to do this. One would be to say, well, look, if the mass is 3m and m, why don't I let m be, and I'm just making this up, 2. 
then the bigger mass would be six. And if you crunch the numbers, it'll work and give you the same answer. Or uh, you could let little m be five and big m be fifteen. And believe it or not, you'll get the same you'll get the same acceleration no matter what. Yeah. Six point seven four from the previous question. You're still on that. Okay, we've moved on. But thank you for following along. Um, I'll, I'll solve it later. Whoever has answers, keep track of them, and then uh, I'll, I'll go do it next class, and we'll talk about it. Um, so that's one way of doing it, Caitlin. If they give you an algebraic one, don't be scared to make up reasonable numbers. The only thing I don't ever want to use is a 1, because I'm scared if I plug in a 1, something might cancel when it wasn't supposed to. So I'll use 2 or 5 or 10 are my, are my standard fallbacks, because those are nice, easy numbers to do math with. Okay? You could do it algebraically, by the way, by doing exactly what you did, factoring out an M and gathering like terms, and you'll find M's cancel, and it actually works, but eh. That's the high-tech way. The low-tech way, oh, okay, let M be 17.3, which would be dumb, but you could. And then big M would be, uh, 3M would be whatever 17.3 times 3 is, and the numbers would work, and you'll still get the 4.9. Did that answer your question okay? I'll let you try the rest of it. Any others? Oh. <clears throat> okay. Who asked number eight? Okay. Um, I'll call this first one mass one. I'll call this one mass two. I'll start with mass two first because it's easier. What are the forces acting on the 3.2? Get the obvious ones. Absolutely. Is it touching the ground? Okay. Is it in free fall? Tension. What are the forces acting on mass 1? Get the obvious ones. Absolutely M1G. Is it in free fall? Then there's tension. And is it on a surface? So I'm going to put tension. And there's also a normal force. Must be. And in this case, by the way, normal force is not mg. I'm going to have to figure it out. You know why I know it's not mg? Because there's two upwards forces and only one downwards force. And I'm assuming tension isn't zero. You know how I know tension isn't zero? Because this thing is hanging. And the tensions I know have to be the same. Who's winning? Now, it's a tie. But let's let this be the winner for now. So I'm going to go winner minus loser. Now, when I follow this tension around, though, it becomes a winner. And when I follow normal force around, it also ends up being a winner. When it gets the other side, it's pointing down. And I have uh, minus M1G. And that equals Y0. It's in equilibrium, if you want the fancy physics for it. Yeah, it's at rest. Um, oh, what happens to the tension, Caitlin? Excellent. Hey! Do I know M2? Check. Do I know G? Check. Do I know M1? Check. Do I know G? Check. I can solve for normal force. Plus this over, minus that over. I think the normal force is going to be M1G minus M2G. I think the normal force is going to be, heck, I'll even crunch the numbers really, really quickly. Uh, M1, 5 times 9.8 minus 3.2 times 9.8. 17.6, 17.6, newtons if I go to two sig figs. Is that all right? Actually, looks ugly, but turns out in some ways to be easier than a lot of the friction ones, certainly, because everything is vertical still. Is that all right? I would love to do more, but I gotta get today's lesson done. So, so lesson six. Lesson six, what we call the inclined plane. What we're really saying is, okay, what if we're not on level ground anymore? Suppose a person is standing on a ramp, and they're standing on a scale, on a Newton scale that's attached to a rope. As the angle of the ramp increases, what happens to the scale reading? A, no change. B, increases. C, decreases. So if you were standing on a scale 
on a ramp, and the ramp was getting steeper and steeper and steeper, and you were looking down at the scale, what would you notice? Would the scale not change at all? Would the scale reading increase, or would the scale reading decrease? Now, by the way, this has nothing to do with the scale. I'm really asking this. What does the scale measure? You see, what I'm really asking you is what happens to the normal force in this situation? That's what you want to be thinking. Don't let the scale trip you up. Instead, be thinking, what will be happening to the normal force? Once again, I'm going to ask you to vote. Who thinks the answer is A, no change? Who thinks the answer is B, increases? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Who thinks the answer is C, decreases? Okay. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to try and convince each other right now before we go over this. So, who has a convincing argument that they think will sway the entire class? Yeah. First, what do you think the answer is? I don't think you have a convincing argument that will sway the entire class. Who picked C and has a convincing argument that will sway the entire class? So I think I, I think he I was watching his hands and trying to hear. I think you approached it the way I would approach it. What was your argument? Okay, I like what he's doing. Is he's saying, look, instead of dealing with the ramp, why don't I start with the one that I'm familiar with, level? And are you going to compare it to vertical? And then are you going to ask what happened and? It must go in between. Nice. Here's a great argument. Go ahead. So on level ground. Okay. So on level ground, we agree normal force is mg. Uh-huh. If he goes vertical, what's his normal force? He's not even touching this. In fact, he's in free fall, so his normal force would be? So we would go from full normal force to zero. How could that happen? Do you think it suddenly jumps to zero? I think it gradually decreases, 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 decreases until you're in free fall. Is that, is that a fair argument? By the way, the reason I wanted to do that is I'm trying to show you strategies that I use when they throw these at me. And one of the big ones is go to the two simplest cases that you know to try and figure out what happens between them. I can kind of imagine level ground. I'm familiar with that. We've talked a lot about free fall. Okay, what we're really talking about is what happens as you go from level ground to free fall. Decreases. Explain your answer using principles of physics. The Blackaby theorem. There, we've named it after you. Level ground. Did you really have to ask? Don't I always say don't write this down if I don't want you to write something down? I'm pretty consistent on that. Level ground, normal force is mg. Vertical wall, normal force is zero. How does it get from mg to zero? It must slowly decrease. And I, how would I write that? I think if I was on a provincial exam or on a test, I might say, therefore, it must decrease from mg to zero. I'm going to try and write it in shorthand here because this is in our notes. Therefore, f, what does a downward arrow mean? I've used this before. Decreases, what does an upward arrow mean? From mg to zero. Have we convinced you, Emily? Okay. 
Okay. By the way, Matt's approach works very well, I think. So the Blackaby theorem, the Blackaby approach, the Blackaby strategy works very well, I think, for example two. So example two says same situation, but instead of the normal force, the scale ring, what happens to the tension in the rope? No change, increases or decreases. Can you see how, I hope, using his strategy, I think the answer becomes reasonably obvious. What's the tension if you're on the ground in the rope? Basically, it, probably hanging. What's the tension if you're vertical? In fact, I think it'd be MG, wouldn't it? You'd be hanging from the rope. So, oh, it goes from zero to maximum. Increases. Use the Blackaby theorem. Yes, this is going online. You can show your parents that now you've got a theorem named after you. We're so proud. We're just disappointed it took so long. Okay. Here's what I want you to realize. What we're trying to get you to believe, Jeanette, is that when you're on a ramp, gravity is doing two things. It's pulling you against the ramp, squeezing you, and it's also pulling you down the ramp. In fact, here's a ramp. And here's a mass. Right now, whoop, got to find the equilibrium point because it's fairly slippery. It's not level right now. Can you see it is at a slight angle? Gravity is pulling it down, but gravity is also pulling it against the ramp and holding it there. But as the angle increases, oh, uh, there's a normal force. As the angle increases, the normal force decreases, friction decreases because friction is newtons of normal force, and gravity's downward pull increases until eventually it'll start to slide. And if I did this, the ramp wouldn't come into play. This thing would just tumble on its own, wouldn't be touching anymore. And if I do this, normal force equals mg. Nothing wants to pull it sideways. Okay. In terms of the other forces that act on the ramp, there will be a normal force, but the normal force, by definition, is always perpendicular to the surface. It's always 90 degrees to the surface. In fact, the word normal in math, if we say two objects are normal to each other, we say they're 90 degrees to each other. Oh, I thought that just meant that they were like normal, normal, like not weird. No, actually, it has a mathematical meaning. If the surface is rough, there will be friction parallel to the surface of the ramp. So here it is. It says, draw a force diagram for an object on a rough ramp that is sliding down the ramp, and then B will do up the ramp. So here's our first angled free body diagram. I'm going to say, what are the forces acting on this? And I'm going to start out with my usual, get the obvious ones. There should be no hesitation and no questions in your voice when I say, get the obvious ones. And which way does gravity always act? So mg, and draw it nice and long. We're going to exaggerate it for a reason, because we're going to use nice big diagrams here. That's supposed to be straight down. If it looks a bit slanty, sorry. What else? Is the ramp sitting on a surface? then there is a normal force. Now the normal force acts 90 degrees to the surface. So the normal force is going to go out at a right angle like that. Which way does it say this block is sliding? Down the ramp? So which way is friction acting? That's the free body diagram for an object sliding down the ramp or an object at rest where friction is exactly canceling out gravity. What about sliding up the ramp? 
Well, what are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. Absolutely. What else? A normal force at a 90 degree angle. Which way would friction be acting this time? Downwards. By the way, this is why it's way tougher to push something, to slide something up a hill than down a hill. Up a hill, you got gravity and friction tugging against you. Down a hill, gravity is helping. It's really only friction that you're trying to overcome. Here's what we're going to do. Here is our strategy. We're going to pretend this right here is level ground. We're going to tilt our heads because that makes the normal force vertical like it used to be, which I like, and it makes friction parallel to the ground, which I like. The problem is gravity is neither vertical or nor horizontal. You know what we're going to do with gravity? We're going to break it into something. You know what we're going to break it into? Components. Components. But we're going to always do it the same way so that our diagrams all look the same. There are many ways to do it. We're just going to memorize the easiest, simplest approach. And then our tug of war will work again. Turn the page. I just fibbed. Go back a page, actually. I'll show you what I mean. I'll change colors. You guys can use a dotted line. What I'm going to do, I like the normal force. I'm happy with that. I like friction. I'm happy with that. I'm going to break gravity up, and I'm going to break gravity up into that and that with a lovely right angle right there. I'm going to break gravity up. I'm going to break gravity up into this force and this force. By the way, do you see how I made them add to each other tip to tail to give me the hypotenuse? And I'm going to give these names. I'm going to call this mg perpendicular. My symbol for per this, the math symbol for perpendicular is an upside down capital T because it's at 90 degrees to the ramp. And I'm going to call this mg parallel because that section is parallel to the ramp. And the symbol for parallel is two parallel lines. I'm going to call this mg perpendicular and m g parallel. Friction is what times what? Mu times a normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. Not mg. What? That component. So we're going to be doing some trig here. We're going to end up with lots of sines and cosines in our equations for the remainder of this unit. But it's actually right angle trig, so no sine law, cosine law. And you'll find it gets pretty standard. You'll start to memorize shortcuts. Unfortunately, this time y and sine uh, don't go together. So now turn the page. Which of the following is the best force diagram for a mass that is at rest on a ramp? Which of the following is the best force diagram for that mass there? Well, what are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious ones. Gravity, does that help at all? No, they both have gravity. Uh, normal force, oh, they both have normal force. A or B? Why A? Okay. Because it's at rest, if B was correct, if I break this into components, part of gravity is pulling down the hill, and there's nothing up the hill to resist it. So B can't be right. If I break this into components, oh, you know how big friction is? It's exactly the same size, Sean, as that component there because it's at rest. I'll call this 
mg perpendicular. I'll call this mg parallel. Do you see why I said I want to draw a bigger diagram? This is why, Mitchell, I drew a nice big diagram here, because if you're doing them small, it gets really awkward to label things. But in my answer, I would say friction has to equal the parallel to the ramp component of gravity to be at rest. B would have to be sliding. In fact, B is a frictionless surface. B is ice. In order to determine the size of the squeeze perpendicular and slide parallel components, we need to find the angle in our sketched triangle. Now, the angle they will always give you, Connor, is the angle of the ramp, that one. They'll give that to you in 99% of the diagrams. Where does this angle appear in my little sketch? So remember, first of all, we call this mg perpendicular, and we call this mg parallel. We're going to do this once, and then we're going to say, look, as long as we always draw our diagram the same, just memorize the angle goes there, and you don't have to walk through this derivation every time. So we'll walk through it once. Here's our angle. Look at the diagram that I've drawn. I extended gravity nice and long. How big is angle one? Look at it. 90. Why? Well, gravity is perpendicular to the ground. And I extended it so I could notice that. How big is angle two? You know how big angle two is? 90 minus theta. Why? What does every triangle add to? 180. If that's 90, those two have to add to 90. 90 minus that would give you that. You okay with that? How big is angle 3? Same size as angle 2. Why? See the Z? Can I get rid of the Z now? Because that really comes with the diagram. Uh, alt, int, or Z angles. Alternate interior is the fancy schmancy name. So you ready? Instead of angle 3, I'm just going to say angle 2 because they're the same size. Angle 2 plus angle 4 add to 90. You know how I know? Because that's 90 there. Angle 2 plus theta add to 90. If angle 2 plus angle 4 add to 90, and angle 2 plus angle theta add to 90, what can you tell me about angle 4 and theta? Kara, they're the same. Angle 4 is theta. So what I'm going to say to you, Kara, is this. If you draw gravity nice and long and exaggerated, and then always go perpendicular to parallel, this angle will always be that angle. That's honestly what I just memorized. I don't walk through this step-by-step -step process anymore. Uh, that means always draw perpendicular and then parallel. And that way also our diagrams look the same. There's nothing wrong, Emily, with drawing parallel first and then perpendicular. It just means your theta is going to be somewhere else. Let's try one. Example 6 says find the acceleration of a 2 kilogram mass sliding down a frictionless 25 degree angle ramp. Okay. What are the forces acting on this mask? Get the obvious one. I'm going to draw that nice and big and exaggerated. Mg. What else? Normal force, which is always at right angles. That's it. For your free body diagram, if I ever say draw the free body diagram, that's it. We're going to put the components on, but I'm going to put them on as dotted lines. So I'm going to break it, and I'll change colors so it stands out. I'm going to break this up into a perpendicular and a parallel with the 90 degree angle right there. So mg is the hypotenuse. This is going to be mg perpendicular. This is going to be 
mg parallel. Pause for a moment, Kayla, and just let that sink in. Is that okay, Kara? Oh, and by the way, how big are these two forces compared to each other? Did you see I was actually able to estimate how long to draw this by just kind of visualizing the perpendicular component? I, I knew to stop my little arrow when I drew it right there. And you'll get good at that too eventually, Brett. But you can kind of almost visualize how long to draw the normal force. Just imagine how long the parallel is going to be when you sketch it in. And, or the perpendicular is going to be when you sketch it in. Okay. Which way is this ramp accelerating? Sorry, huh, ramp. Which way is this mass accelerating down the ramp? Look at your forces. What's the only force that's acting in the same direction as down the ramp? Or let me ask this another way. Who's winning? Ah. Winner. Who's losing? It's a trick question. No one. If I had friction, that might be losing, but we'll get there eventually. This equals MA. How big is this angle? How big is this angle? The proof that we just did is that one is 25. You can write the 25, or even if you just go boom and kind of color that, I'll clue in that you've clued in that these two are the same. You opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent or hypotenuse? Because MG is the one that I know. Adjacent or hypotenuse? Which trig function? Sine. Did you say sin? The only sin is saying sin instead of sine. I, anyways, uh, sine 25 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Can you get the mg parallel by itself? What's the mathematical expression for mg parallel? What would I do with this down here? Yeah, turns out mg sine 25 equals mg parallel. And I usually do this off in the margin. Actually, that's a fib. Eventually, you'll memorize some of these or reach the point where you can do these in your head. But until I get good, I usually do the little trig Sokotoa off in the margin. And Andrew, here's the key. Instead of mg parallel, you know what I'm going to write? Instead of mg parallel, you know what I'm going to write? Instead of mg parallel, you know what I'm going to write? Is that okay? Oh, and I, I noticed something else kind of nice. What cancels? Turns out they didn't need to tell me the mass. The mass cancels. The acceleration is G sine 25. Uh, make sure you're in degrees, especially if you have a graphing calculator, and more of you have graphing calculators now. Make sure you're in degrees. What is G sine 25? Sine 30, I know, is 0.5, so it's going to be a little less than 4.9. I'm going to take a guess of 4.56. I don't know. What? 4. Point what? Four point, oh, I'm that far off? Okay. 4.14? Trig angles are tough to guess in your head. Units? Meters per second squared. This is going to be our strategy. Anytime they give us a ramp, we're going to say, uh-uh, I'm going to go components, and that way I'll go parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. Did we use the normal force or mg perpendicular at all? There was no friction, so we didn't need to. I do know that they're the same size, though. Otherwise, it would be sinking into the ramp or flying off the ramp because I'd have unbalanced forces in those directions. Is 4.14 right? Yeah, OK. Example 7. 
consider a five kilogram mass sliding down a rough with a coefficient of friction of 0.2, 35 degree angle ramp. A, find the force of friction. B, find the acceleration. Okay. What are the forces acting on this block? Get the obvious ones. Jacob, get the obvious ones. Darn right. Ninety degrees, by the way, about that long. So about this long. You see how I did that? About that long, right there. That's where I'm going to start going. Ninety degrees. What else? Which way? How do you know? You're right. How do you know? Sliding down and friction is the opposite direction of the motion. Friction. There's my free body diagram. Now I'm going to add components. Mg perpendicular and Mg parallel. Oh, and this angle is the same size as that angle. That's the 35 right here. Look very carefully. Who's winning? Oh, wait a minute. A said find the force of friction. Okay, let's do that. A, friction is what times what? Let's write that down just to jog our memory. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. What? What's the same size as this guy? Mg perpendicular. Friction is going to be mu mg perpendicular. Uh, let's see. With this angle right here, mg perpendicular, is it opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. Which trig function am I going to end up using for perpendicular? For what it's worth, parallel is going to be sine almost all the time, and perpendicular is going to be cos almost all the time. But I can only say almost all the time, not every single time. So if I hear you correctly, you're saying this. Cosine of, what's the angle? 35 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Trevor, how would I get mg perpendicular by itself in this little equation right here? Can you see it? Move the mg up. Okay. Can I do that right here without rewriting it? Let's see if we can. I think friction ends up being mu mg cos. 35. Friction ends up being 0.2 times 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 35. How big is the force of friction? Better make sure I'm in degrees. Hey, I am. You get 8.03? 8.03 newtons. No friction. B, find the acceleration. Now we're going to go... Winner minus loser. B. Which way is this thing accelerating according to the question? Down. So look closely. Who's winning? And don't say MG because it's not MG. Who's winning? MG parallel. See it? 
So anything that ends up pointing down the ramp, winner positive. Anything that ends up pointing up the ramp, loser negative. I think my equation is going to look like this. Mg parallel minus friction equals ma. Now, I know that friction is 8.03, but actually, I'm going to plug in the algebraic expression to show you something kind of nerdily cool. Mu mg cosine of 35 equals ma. What about mg parallel? What's that? Well, here's my angle, Brienne, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Which trig function? In fact, without showing work, are you okay if I go, I'm pretty sure this is mg sine 20. It is mg sine 25. Is that okay? 35? Sorry, I'm thinking the angle from last time. 35? Here's what I want you to notice. What do you notice here? Is there an m? in the first term? Is there an M in the second term? Is there an M in the third term? Is there an M in every single thing? Then you know what happens to those M's? They cancel and I already have A by itself. The acceleration is going to be G sine 35 minus mu G cos 35. It is. 9.5 Sine 35 minus 0.2, 9.8, cos 35. What's this thing going to accelerate at? Four point zero two. Anyone else? Connor, what'd you get? Oh, okay. 4.02 seems a bit high to me, but maybe not. 4.02? Oh, okay. By the way, can it possibly be bigger than 9.8? Because 9.8 would mean the ramp was how steep? Free fall and no friction. So there's a built-in error check here. If you get something bigger than 9.8, I don't think so. Right? Sorry, what was it, uh, Brett? 4.03? Direction, in the winning direction. Which way is that? Down the ramp. Which you could argue is positive or negative. I don't care. You know what? I got everything in my setup. Example seven, or example, no number on it apparently. A 7.5 kilogram block remains motionless on a surface that is inclined at an angle of 21 degrees. What's the minimum coefficient of friction on the surface? Okay. I like this question. I like this question. What am I going to do first here? Dolph, absolutely. I'm going to draw a little picture. And I'm going to cheat because I can. Don't I have a different, don't I have a ramp shape? I guess I don't. Never mind, off to freehand. Well, I'll do this. Here's my ramp. There. That looks vaguely straight. The angle is 21 degrees. There's my block. The mass is 7.5. I don't think I'm going to draw that on there because I want to write a bunch of forces on there. What are the forces acting on this block? Get the obvious ones. 
Yeah. MG. What else? Normal force, perpendicular. What else? Got to be friction acting up the hill to keep it from sliding down the hill. And that's it. If I say draw the free body diagram, that's all I want to see. Ooh, but I'm actually solving this. So now I'm going to break gravity into its components. Mg perpendicular and Mg parallel. Who's winning? It's a trick question. Do you know who's really winning? It's a tie. Because it says it's in equilibrium. It says it's not moving. We want the minimum to hold it in place. So, you know what? Let's let down be negative. Gravity is usually the winner. So let's go. Here's our winner. Winner minus loser equals M. Oh, wait a minute. Why can't I put a zero over here? Acceleration is zero. Uh, Mg parallel. Oh, this is 21, so this is 21 degrees right there. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse? This is the hypotenuse. Which trig function am I going to put in for Mg parallel? Because I know the hypotenuse. It's going to be just the hypotenuse sine 21 minus friction is what times what mu fn oh instead of equals zero how about i plus friction over to this side and just do that is that okay mitchell or did it lose you no i don't know the normal force Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as a normal force. What? And um, <clears throat> opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Which trig function relates mg to mg perpendicular? Relates h and a. Cos. In fact, my equation is going to look like this. mg sine 21 equals mu mg cos 21. <gasps> what happens to the masses? Turns out they cancel. Doesn't matter how heavy this mass is. It'll stay in equilibrium under a 21 degree angle with this coefficient of friction, whether it's a semi-truck or a feather. Yeah. <gasps> Not only, not only does the mass not matter, if you somehow beamed this ramp to Mars where the G is different, this would still stay in equilibrium. Or if you beamed it to Jupiter, this would still stay in equilibrium. As it turns out, this one here doesn't depend on any of those things. That's kind of nerdily cool. In fact, it seems to me the coefficient of friction is sine 21. divided by cos 21. And Matt, you did math 12 last year. Do you remember what sine over cosine was? Turns out it's just a tangent. They don't know that yet, so we won't scare them with it. But, but for what it's worth, if you ever wonder, where the heck does tangent appear in physics? Because it hardly ever, it's almost always sine and cosine. Uh, turns out it's the coefficient of friction of a ramp. A minimum, sorry, the minimum coefficient of friction of a ramp. Uh, bigger would be better because then you'd have room to spare. But right now, this coefficient of friction, which is what? Anyone? 0.38 units. Caitlin. Oh, that's right. Coefficient of friction. A lot of people, because it's coefficient of friction, they want to write newtons. No, 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 it's not. Last one. I'm going real slow here. If it seems like it's a long lesson, I want this. This is the 
By the way, almost all your questions on your test are going to be on the written section are going to be at angles because that's physics 12. I like number eight. I like number eight. I like number eight. Number eight is a nice question. I like number eight. I really, 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 really like number eight. This one here. I like this question. I like this question. It says, consider a six kilogram mass sliding up a rough surface. How can it be sliding up a rough surface? I think someone's given it a big push and let go, but its momentum is carrying it up the surface for a little bit. Will it keep going? No, it's going to come to a stop. I know that much. I'd like to know how far up the ramp it will travel before stopping. That's part D. To do that, we're going to have to find part A, the force of friction, part B, the net acceleration, C, how long it takes to come to a stop, and then D, solve for D. This is a combination of a combining in one question of everything we've done all year except projectiles. Uh, first, I'm going to dope. Here's my ramp. Here's my block. Oh, if I can give you any advice, by the way, if you're doing a dulp, don't do a little tiny piddly one. You won't be able to label the triangle and the angles properly. Do a fairly big one. I tried to do mine about, what, quarter of the page wide-ish? Andrew, what are the forces acting on this block? Get the obvious one. Absolutely. What else? Kayla, normal force at a right angle to the surface, about like that. What else? Friction, acting which way? Y downwards, you're right. Ah. Friction, and that's it. Now I'm going to break gravity into its components. Here is the parallel component. Here is the perpendicular component. Oh, and Brett, this angle here is 32 degrees. This angle here is 32 degrees. Who's winning? Who's winning? Both are winning. No loser, both winners. So my equation, Caitlin, you're correct, is going to look like this. Parallel plus friction equals MA. Uh, there's my angle parallel, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Opposite, hypotenuse. Which trig function in this question is parallel going to be when I replace it with mg? It's going to be mg what? Sine. You see how you can start to do some of the trig in your head? Pushing you guys a little bit. This is going to be mg sine. What's the angle? 32 plus... Friction is mu times the normal force. Oh, I don't know the normal force. <gasps> but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. What? What's the same size as this guy? Really? Mg perpendicular. Oh, our vendor. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse compared to this guy. It's going to be adjacent and hypotenuse. Which trig function do you think I'm going to replace mg perpendicular with? Here's my equation. mg sine 32 
plus mu mg cos 32 equals ma. Oh, cool! You know what happens here? Yes, it's canceled. By the way, th this is why, when, how many of you have been on a roller coaster? Or any amusement park ride? Okay, been on a roller coaster, been a roller coaster, which of you? Did you have to step on a scale before you got on the roller coaster? You know why? Because it turns out the mass is canceled. Otherwise, we'd have to have all of, we'd have to balance every single car out. You have to step on scales. We have to make sure that they were all, if the masses didn't cancel, we'd have real issues. Katie, question? Divide by M, divide by M, divide by M. Okay, I'm not canceling them by subtraction. I'm saying if you were to divide everything by, if there was a five here, a five here, and a five here, timesing everything by five, you can divide everything by five. You're timesing everything, but good question. You're, maybe I didn't explain it well. You're timesing everything by an M, divide everything by an M, and they're gone. It's kind of nice. Um, oh, so it looks like the acceleration is going to be G at 9.8 sine 32 plus, I've scrolled down, what was mu? Point? I'll scroll up. Point 0.1 times 9.8 times cos 32. What's the acceleration? What'd you get? I don't know, anybody. 6 point, 6.02, anybody else? Cool. Oh, that was part B actually said find the acceleration. What did part A want us to find? Okay, I'm gonna, I got room right here. A, friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know the fact. You know what? Isn't that right there friction without the mass canceling? Right? Mu m g cos 32. Okay. Point 0.1 times the mass times g times cos 32. What's the force of friction? Point 0.83, that seems small. Is that right? How big is the mass? 0 0.85? 0 0.1, well, 0 0.1 is a small coefficient of friction. Times 6 times 9.8 times the cos of 32. I'm getting something totally different, guys. 4.98, right? The mass doesn't cancel up here. It's this whole thing, including the mass for friction. Right? 4.99. Newtons. C. Find time to stop. Oh. T equals question mark. Now we're going back to last unit. What else do I know? Oh, to stop. What does that tell me? Let me pause. Brett, question? It was 4.99, wasn't it? 4.986. Is that not right? That's that's right, isn't it? It's 0.1 times 6 times 9.8 mu mg cos. Right? Are we there? I got to move on. I got 90 seconds. Okay? Time. Oh, what's V final? Zero. What's A? Got to be careful. Am I slowing down or speeding up? Then A is not 6.02. Negative 6.02. 
What's VI? 20? Could you find T? T equals VF minus VI all over A. I'm not going to get a chance to do that. But now that you have that, could you find D the distance? Yes. What's your homework? Sorry, guys. Didn't quite work. Uh, number one. Two. Three. Five. Eight. Patience. <sighs> um, how many have I given you? One, two, I need to give you more than that. No, I don't. I think you need practice with this, uh, but I don't want you to find angle theta. That's terrifying. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Um, 11. Fifteen is cool, but I won't assign it right now. I'll pause there. Ramps. Have a great weekend, folks.